Hello, everybody, and welcome to section 1.6 in pre-calculus, a library of parent functions. So interestingly, if we were in school, I would not actually teach this lesson. I would put you off into groups and let you graph on your own. It's really just a practice of all the graphing that you've learned. So you are welcome to go ahead and try as many of these as you can do on your own. Pay special attention to open and closed circles on your graphs if you're checking your answers. But I'm gonna go ahead and do them now so that you have each one to look up if you have any trouble. This first question is, uh, in my opinion, such a good example of how pre-calculus is different than Algebra 2. We would not normally ask this question in Algebra 2, but pre-calculus likes to just say the exact same thing that you've already learned in a different way. So it says, write the linear function f. That sounds confusing, but they just mean write the equation of a line. If I had said write the equation of a line, you would have known what to do. Equation of a line. So right away, I'm thinking to myself, y is equal to m times x minus x1 plus y1. What two things do you need to make the equation of a line? Slope and a point. And then it says such that f of negative 3 is equal to negative 8, and f of 1 is equal to 2. Now watch this. If you had been in algebra, it would have said, given the two points, 1, 2, and negative 3, negative 8. And hopefully now you're thinking, oh, I know how to do that. Of course you do. Remember, so much of what you're learning this year is expanding your very basic knowledge into something a little bit more complex. So remember, f of x is y. f of x and y are the same thing. So when you see this notation, the negative 3 is the x and the negative 8 is the y. So this fancy way of saying it is just the point negative 3, negative 8. So back to what do we need to make the equation of a line? We need slope. So the slope is 2 minus a minus 8 over 1 minus a minus 3, which gives us 10 over 4. So the slope is reducing it, 5 halves. And then you can pick either point you want. I usually pick the positive ones. So x minus 1 plus 2. But if you didn't, it is equally acceptable to write x plus 3 minus 8. Now, for those of you that might have done it a different way, both of these will simplify to the same answer. So you can stop here. This boxed answer is great. But if you were to distribute, you would get 5 half x minus 5 halves plus 2, but 2 is the same thing as 4 halves. So this equation could be written like this. This one, same thing. 5 half x plus 15 halves x, not just 15 halves. And 8 can be rewritten as 16 halves. And what does that simplify to? 5 halves x minus 1 half. Same. So here are four answers to the same question. So really growing up here with the, the pre-calc, it's getting a little harder. You can do it. Be confident. All right. So piecewise functions are hard for people. Um, I like to think of them as just doing one piece at a time. Remember, f of x means y. We just talked about that. So this is literally two equations. y is equal to 2x plus 3. And then y is equal to negative x plus 4. So I'm going to do those two separately. And I know that they make a line. And normally you could say, oh, I can graph that line. I know the y-intercept. I know the slope. But you have to obey these conditions. You have to pick x values less than or equal to 1. So if you really have trouble doing this, you can always make a table. Make sure that 1 is on your table because that's the, that's the point where this graph is going to stop. 
So I pick one and I get five. But now I have to pick numbers less than one. You can't pick two. I know you normally would go one, two, three, but you can go down. I can pick zero or negative one. So at zero, I get three. And you really don't need to continue. You've got two points that makes a line one, five, closed circle, because it's less than or equal to, and then zero, three. And of course, we know the slope is two. So now that you've gotten it, you can just go ahead and keep drawing that slope to make a really nice line. It does continue only in that direction. So again, f of x means y. So this equation is y is equal to negative x plus 4, for x is greater than 1. So now, okay, this is the most important thing I'm going to say today. People always get this wrong. You still put 1 on the table. And you might be thinking, no, no, it says x is greater than 1. I'm going to start at 2. But think about this for a minute. If I said to you, graph on a number line, x is greater than 1, you know what you would do? You'd start at 1. You'd put an open circle, and then you draw your line. Or some people do it this way. But you would start at 1. 1 is still the most important part. If I asked you to graph x is greater than 1, you wouldn't start at 2. And it's the same thing here. You want to start at 1. So 1 needs to go on the table. Most important thing I'm going to say all day. So I put a 1 in, and I get 3. Uh-oh. Now you're thinking, oh, no, it's a different point. I was going to say that's a 1, 5. So 1, 3, open circle. I thought it landed on the same point. We'll get to that next problem. And then this one has a slope of down 1 over 1. So you're welcome to use slope. You don't actually have to plot a second point. The reason that I did it on the first one is because people struggle to make the slope when they're going in the backwards direction. When you're moving the graph to the left, people see a slope of two and usually do it backwards. So it does pay to make an extra point. So I'm gonna make an extra point. X has to be greater than one, so I'm gonna pick two. And that gives me two and I check at two, I'm at two. So I know that I did it right. And that's what our first graph looks like. Number two. Again, these are both lines. It really pays to write them separately. And it pays to write the number on the chart right away that you're going to need. So I definitely want to do two. Remember, this is interval notation. This means this is equivalent to two is, actually, I'm going to do um, x. x is greater than two. It means it goes everything from two up to infinity, but since it's a um, parenthesis, it's just greater than, not greater than or equal to. This is equivalent to x is less than or equal to two. I have to tell you, I really like interval notation. It lets me see it on the number line. This interval notation is gonna be much more powerful for the graph. So I'm gonna do this graph from negative infinity up until two. It's like there's an imaginary line there that's saying, I'm gonna break it in half. From negative infinity to two is gonna be over here, and then from two to infinity is gonna be over there. So it's a pretty powerful way of thinking about it, and I'm gonna try and convince you not to use the less than or greater than. Okay, so in both cases, two is the, like the break point, two needs to be on my chart for both of them. When I put a two into the blue one, I get one minus two is negative one. I'm gonna pick one more number in this interval. So between negative infinity and two, I'm gonna pick zero. I could pick one, it doesn't matter. If I pick zero, I get one. So at two, I'm at negative one, and at zero, I'm at one. It has a slope of if I rewrote this as y is equal to negative x plus 1, does that sound like it could be right? Definitely. If I 
connect those two points and make it all the way, I definitely get a slope of negative one. People that don't use this method tend to get it wrong. If you tried to do this on your own and your line went that way, it was because you thought to yourself, oh, I'll start at two, but then the slope is negative one. So you went down negative and it felt negative because you were going in the backwards direction. But it needs to be negative as you read from left to right. For the green one, I'm going to put the two in and I get negative one. This is the one I was thinking it was going to be when I did the first one. And it lands on the same point. So what do you do if you need to draw an open circle where there's a closed circle? Well, you don't do that. So this is how I like to think of it. There's two things at the same spot, closed circle and open circle. Think about it like rock, paper, scissors. They're both throwing it down and the closed circle wins. So don't even try to draw an open circle. Closed circle wins the spot. And then this has a slope of one, so I'm predicting it's gonna go like that, but I'm just gonna plot one more point. Three minus three is zero. And now I can see sure enough. It goes up like this. In case you're thinking, hey, that's an absolute value graph. Good for you, it most certainly is. It is the absolute value graph that has been shifted over to, not plus, minus two, minus two, and then down one. So why would anybody ever write it as a piecewise function? because in calculus, we can't actually do calculus to absolute value functions. We have to change them to piecewise functions so that we can do the calculus. Remember, this is pre-calculus, so a lot of the skills that you're learning this year will seem completely useless to you if you don't take calculus next year. But if you take calculus, you'll be really thankful for all that you're learning. Next one. Remember, at any point, you can stop this video and try and do some of these on your own. So I always break it down into two. I think to myself, oh, this one is a line. You might even choose to rewrite it in a format you know. Somebody is gonna say, oh, I'm not gonna make a table. I'm just gonna start at two. And then I'm gonna go down two over one, down two over one. You are more than welcome to do that. But don't forget, you have to stop at one. That's the most important point. If you don't plot anything else, plot one. So when X is one, I get zero, right? So that's where the graph stops. So it looks like this. You cannot keep going. Now, second part, Y is equal to square root of X minus one. This is why we did section 1.7 before section 1.6 because now this is an easy graph to make you know it's a square root function and it's been shifted to the right remember you do opposite when it's inside the square root so you're going to move right one again here's a place where i want to make an open circle but there's already a closed circle there rock paper scissors closed circle wins so this is my new zero zero and from that, the parent graph for square root is up one over one and over four up two. Now that's actually as far as I'm gonna go. And I see that it's an open, it's a parenthesis, so that's gonna make an open circle. So open circle. And that's what my next graph looks like. Next one, ooh, three parts. Very, it's getting exciting. Y is equal to negative X minus two is gonna be a line. What's the most important point to plot? The negative one, gotta do it. When I put a negative one in, the opposite of negative one is positive one, minus two is negative one. It's gonna be an open circle at negative one, negative one. This is a good example of one that people graph incorrectly. They see the negative and they think, oh, and it has a negative slope, down one over one, down one over one, all the time. People get this wrong. So remember that either plot a second point or remember that a negative slope falls from left to right. 
but I'm going to be safe and put another point in, negative 2. Negative, negative 2 is positive 2, minus 2 is 0. And that just confirms that it should look like this. Red graph. Remember, this is just y is equal to all three things. And this does happen in real life where things change. Think about the price of a t-shirt. You might have t-shirt sales where if you buy anywhere from zero to a hundred for a school, they'll charge you seven dollars per, per t-shirt. But then once you reach a hundred, then there's a new algorithm. They say, oh, for now it's only gonna be five dollars a t-shirt. That would be the slope of the line changing. Um, so piecewise does exist in the real world, even though it just feels like a bunch of useless math. What's the most important point to plot? Two this time. I have to plot the negative one and I have to plot the one. There's two endpoints. This is going to be a closed circle and at one one it's going to be an open circle. So rock, paper, scissors, closed wins. So now I'm going to fill that in. One one is open. And please do not just draw a line. This is a cubic function. So another point goes through is zero, zero. But remember, cubic functions look like this. It's curvy. So if you don't have a curve to it, I can't give you full credit for it. It is not a line. It's subtle, and it's much easier to see when you can see the whole thing. If you can see the whole thing, see how much more obvious the curve is? But I don't want you to draw the whole thing, but I do want you to draw this little tiny section correctly. It is curved. And the last section is gonna go from one to four. So y is equal to one. This is where it really pays to use this y is equal to method. Because when people just see a one, they really just want to plot a point. But it's not a point. It's a line. It's the line y is equal to one. What does the line y is equal to one look like? Looks like that. But where are we going to plot it? From one to four. So I'm going to start at one, close circle, fills in the open circle. And then to four, I'm going to stop at four. So it's going to go across like that. All right, you're doing good. I'm gonna do this next one a little bit differently. If I were walking around the room and somebody were having some trouble with the way I was doing it, then this is the suggestion that I would offer. Um, so some of you might like this and it might help you a little bit. So I would break the graph into three different sections. So I literally look at my interval and I say from negative infinity, way out there somewhere, until negative two. And then I would say negative two to two goes like that. And then two to infinity, two to infinity. So for some people, it helps to think to themselves, okay, I'm gonna have a, a section of graph in this blue section, in this yellow section, in this green section. Let's see if this works for you. So in the blue section, this is my blue one, y is equal to negative three. Remember that that's just a flat horizontal line at negative three. And when I get to the point where I have to stop, the one point that I wanna plot is negative two. I want an open circle. And what is y? Well, y is always negative three, okay? So an open circle, to negative three. My next one, y is equal to, remember f of x confuses some people, just y is equal to two minus x squared. It might help you to make it negative x squared plus two. And maybe then you can see, oh, it's a negative downward facing parabola that's been moved up to, but it hasn't moved left or right. If it had gone left or right, you would have seen something here but it's not. So it's just up or down. And in this case, it's up. So I'm going to take my parabola and I'm going to go up two. And then hopefully you remember the 
special points I want you to memorize for a parabola, which is one, one, although I'm going down with it, one, one, and then two, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, open, open again. And then in this direction, two, one, two, three, four. It's really tempting to connect it. Possible that I connected it before and had to edit the video. Oops. Um, really tempting to connect it, but it doesn't actually connect. It's a piecewise function. It doesn't have to connect. There we go. And the last section, green. Y is equal to X minus 4. So this is a line. A lot of you are really good at graphing lines. You would start at negative 4 and then go up 1 over 1. I don't want a line in the yellow section. I only want the line in the green section. And remember my advice from the very first problem? Always do the one point you need to know, 2. So at 2, it's negative 2. And I would probably do one more point to make sure you do the slope in the correct direction, which people tend to mess up on the piecewise. So 2, negative 2 is in the exact same spot, but it's also open. So it's going to be open, open. This is going to stay an open circle. And then 3, negative 1. And I can see it has a slope of 1, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw the rest of it. Okay. I realized that I did not do these two special points in the table for this one. I didn't because I was very confident. It's not a rule. You don't have to do it. Um, but for my parabola, I knew exactly what I was doing with my parabola because I got to use the center section. If this parabola had been in the green section, I probably would have made a table. But you can always just confirm it. If you put in a negative 2, then it comes out to negative 2. And if you put in a positive 2, it also comes out to negative 2. So you could always check it that way. Halfway done. Number 7. We have two square root functions. So I'm going to start with y is equal to square root of negative x. And I'm going to make this graph, I'll use my highlighter method one more time, from negative 4 to 0. And then I'm going to do from 0 to 4 this graph. So the graph's only going to take up this section. All right, let's start with the red one. What points do I want to plug in? Since there's two endpoints, I'm going to plug in both of them, not just one. So this means opposite or negative. In this case, it's easier to use opposite. The opposite of negative 4 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So at negative 4, I'm going to put a closed circle at 2. And then I also want to plug in 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Now, this might not be enough for some of you. Some of you might want to plot another point, but you do have to pick a number between negative 4 and 0. Or some of you might say, oh, no, I see it. This is, the, this is where it starts, and then it's 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2. And you might be able to use your knowledge to get that, that whole graph there. On the blue one, it's just our traditional square root function. So I'm not going to make a table because I know this one by heart. It's an open circle. Do not try to draw an open circle over the closed one. Rock, paper, scissors, closed wind. So just don't draw it. But I do want an open circle there at the end. Square root of 4 is 2. So I start at 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2. It looks like that. It's a seagull. Number eight. I have three of them again. I'm going to use my highlighter method for you one more time. Negative two to negative one. I only want to use this little tiny section. Green is going to go from negative one to one. And red or pink from one to two. Look at that. This graph is going to be very tiny. I just am going to go in this little space. So let's do the blue one first. 
Remember, make each one y is equal to. I only want to draw the portion of the line where that blue highlight is. So even though you would normally just start the line at negative two and make a downward slope, it's not going to work for this one. So what do I do? I put in the endpoints. That's the best way, I think. So the opposite of negative two is positive two, minus two is zero, closed. Negative two, zero. The opposite of negative one is one, minus two is negative one, closed. There you go. And if you think about it, if you had drawn the whole line, that would have been right a negative slope that crossed at negative two. So it looks right, but you only want to draw that much of the line. Okay, green one next. Y is equal to X. So again, this is definitely an equation that you know. If I just said graph Y is equal to X, hopefully you'd say zero, zero, one, one, two, two, and you would literally just draw the line. But I only want it in this little section, which can be harder for people so it just is it's just a method where i think it really pays to make a little bit of a table so you definitely want negative one and one on there but y is just equal to x so it's easy and then i'd put on the zero zero now negative one negative one is an open circle but there's already a closed circle in that spot so rock paper scissors closed wins zero zero and then closed circle there Last one, y is equal to two minus x. For many of you, you might like to see it as negative x plus two. So it should have a downward slope and it should cross the y-axis at two, except that it's not going to cross the y-axis because I only wanna go from one to two. The endpoints are what I would put on my table. At one, you get one, and at two, you get zero. This is an open circle and this is closed, but I already have a closed circle at one, one. Rock, paper, scissors, closed wins. It looks like that. Number nine. I don't know if this highlight method is working for you or not, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep doing it for a little while. I'm gonna make sure everybody understands. Negative three to negative one, negative one to two, and two to infinity. All right, red one first. Y is equal to negative two. That is just a flat line at negative two. So I'm going to make a flat line at negative two, but I'm only going to make it in this little red pinkish section. So open circle, open circle because of the parentheses. So I don't know if you're starting to like interval notation better, but I personally love it. I would rather have that than an X is greater than, and then have to think about how that works. This is really nice. It just goes from negative three to negative one. Blue one, step function. Okay. I, I'm just going to tell you right now that no matter what the graph is, I really just always start the step function here. I've got that one memorized. If I put that step in, everything else falls into place because then I can make all the other steps. So here I am making all the other steps. Green one, y is equal to x minus one. I would normally start at negative one and do an upward slope. I can picture it, right? But I don't want that portion of the line and that can be really tricky. So the best thing to do is to start at the point that you need, which is gonna be an open circle, by the way. So at two, it's gonna be one. At three, it's gonna be two. So two, one, three, two, and then it goes from there. So this remains an open circle right there. You guys are doing great. 
I know you're thinking, how does she know that? I don't know that. I'm just trying to be encouraging. That's what I would say if we were in class. Oh, another step function. All right, let me get my little highlighter for people that that's working for. And then when, once people get it, they don't want to stop it. Ooh, look at this interesting thing. We went from negative three to zero, and now from one to four, there's going to be a gap in my piecewise function. All right, this is an important one to me because on this step function, actually, let me just go back and highlight which one's which. This one's going to be this one and then the green one there. All right, so I'm going to do the red one first. Y is equal to the step function. I, I've already told you, I can't make the step function in weird places. I just always start it here. So this is going to be my exception. I'm going to go ahead and draw that because I need it in order to draw all my steps, and then I'm going to erase it. Okay, I'm going to make my eraser a little smaller here. But that helped me. So I personally really like to always draw the first step. Now, for those of you that are allowed your appendix, you probably don't need to do that. But for people that are in a class where you're not allowed to have an appendix, then um, it helps just to always draw that first step, in my opinion. Green one, another chance to practice a parabola, negative x minus 2 squared. This is a downward parabola that's been moved 2 to the right, so right 2 but it hasn't been moved up or down um, and it doesn't have a, a slope of any kind. So it's just gonna obey one, one in both directions. Although careful, this is gonna be an open circle here. And then two, four, one, two, three, four. So I just love those points, zero, zero, one, one, two, four. Those are the basic points on a parabola. And I just realized that that is an open circle right there. Open. That's what it should look like. All right, so that ends the graphing. I hope that by the end that you got it. I know you have some to do for homework. Um, the main reason I wanted to show you the highlight method was not only because some people really love it, but people really like it for these because now you're going backwards. So on the red graph, that red graph goes across this portion. The blue goes across this portion, not quite that far actually, this portion. And then the green takes over from here to the end. That, doing that little thing with the highlighter might help you write the piecewise function. So the first one is going from negative infinity to two, closed circle. The blue one is going from, see people wanna do it up there and they accidentally sometimes say it goes from four down to negative two, but it's across. So from open circle, negative two to one, hmm. Open or closed, open or closed. We'll leave it and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then green goes from one to infinity. You see how that works? So having that little highlight section, breaking it down might really be nice. Okay, so what to do about the open or closed? Only one of them can be open or closed. If they're both closed, if you have a, a blue dot here and then first of all, nobody would win rock, paper, scissors, right? Somebody has to win. But mathematically speaking, it wouldn't pass the vertical line test if both of them were there. So one's open and one's closed. So which one? You get to pick. If you make this one closed, then you have to make this one open. But it is equally acceptable to change it. If I see this on your paper, and then you make this one closed, I'm not gonna know the difference. I mean, the graph is the same for both of them. Okay, so now let's make our equations. So the first two are lines and 
the red one has a negative slope, a negative slope of just pick any two points. So if I pick these two, this is negative four, one. And I mean, you could just count, right? So it went down one over one. So it has a slope of negative one. Now, I know you guys like to write B here, but do you remember that I said you're always allowed to write that other equation of the line? So you can do this instead as negative x plus 4 plus 1, because that's one of the points. Or maybe, or maybe you said I can see it has a negative slope, but it goes through the point negative 2, negative 1. So maybe you have it as x plus 2 minus 1. It doesn't matter. All of them are going to come out to be the same thing if you were to simplify negative x minus 3. This one, if you simplified, would be negative x minus 4 plus 1, which also goes to negative x minus 3. But you can just leave it in this, the one that I actually put in the answer. It's kind of nice that way. The blue one goes through zero, zero. Right? So on the blue one, I just need to know the slope. So the slope between any two points, remember, it's a little hard to see because the big boxes, which are perfectly good, um, but they don't count as one, they actually count as two. But you can still use them. It goes down two and over one, down two and over one. But I don't recommend that you write it like this. If it's zero, zero, just write y is equal to negative two x. So that's why we practiced earlier in the chapter how to write equations of lines. If you just know any one point in the slope, you can write the equation of a line. So back to this red one, by the way, you could have written this or this or what I wrote, all good. And the green one, hopefully you recognize it as a square root curve. So it's got this starting point and then it goes one, one, and then one, two, three, four, two. So it's your basic square root function, but it's been moved to the right one. So x minus 1, remember this is opposite of what you think, and it's been moved down 2, which goes outside of the radical. Inside of the radical is left and right. Outside of the radical is up and down. Okay, that was a hard one. We'll, we'll do another one to make sure that you get that. So again, with the highlighted sections, We've got our red section through here, our blue section through there, and then my green section starts here and goes all the way across. So I'm gonna have three different sections. F of X is equal to, try and make a little more room this time. The red section goes from negative infinity to negative two. I'm just gonna go ahead and make that closed since I don't know which one I want it to be. The blue section goes from, now I have to make this one open, have to, from negative two to two, but this is definitely gonna be open. And the green section is gonna go from closed to, to infinity open. Okay, and I'll just put this over here, or you could have done negative infinity to negative two, and then the blue one would have been negative two to two. Okay, a little side note there. Okay, I've got to get these three equations now. So the first one, the red one, is a parabola. It's a downward parabola. It's been moved to the one, two, three, to the left, which means it's going to be plus three. It's a squared because it's a parabola. 
and it's been moved down one. That's why I taught you 1.7 first. I know it was such a pain to do it that way, but I think it was a good call. Blue one is the step function. Hopefully you recognize it. You can do it with a single bracket. I've seen it with a double bracket. I'll take either. It hasn't been moved left, right, up, or down because its main step is going from zero to one. The last one is just the line. This is a piece of the line y is equal to four. So as hard as it is to do, you can't actually write y is equal to four, you just write four. And sometimes that's a little hard for people. But remember, this f of x means y is equal to, y is equal to, y is equal to. So maybe that helps. It's y is equal to four, just from two to infinity. I know this is hard. I appreciate your hanging in there. So I mentioned before that sometimes while this is an absolute value graph, and it would be so great to write it like that, it's a positive absolute value graph. It has been moved three to the left and then down two. I want you to write it as a piecewise function. So if we were in calculus and you had to do some calculus now, this would not be useful to you. Okay, so if you put that on a test and these are the directions, I'm going to mark it wrong. Let's break it up into a blue section and a red section. So the piecewise function f of x is equal to, I've got my red section goes from negative infinity to negative three. It doesn't matter which one gets the parenthesis, and then from negative three to infinity. Infinities always get the parenthesis. <clears throat> the red one is a downward slope, and it's just a slope of one, 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 one. And the blue one is gonna be a positive slope. Now, <clears throat> for the blue one, it's easy to say, oh, it's a positive slope, and it has a y-intercept of one. But you can't do that for the red. So y is equal to mx plus b was awesome for the blue one, but for the red one, you can't see exactly where it's going to cross. You could extrapolate if you wanted to and try and figure it out. But remember, this is where this concept of y is equal to negative, just pick one point, any point. So I'm going to pick, that's a nice point negative five, zero. So I plug that in there, x plus five plus zero, which you can put into here just like that, but most people are gonna distribute the negative, minus x minus five. So love this method. On number 14, it asks you to complete the graph to make the function odd. So to make the function odd, I want, to, I want to reflect it across the origin. So zero, zero is on there. And then this is the point negative two, negative four. So I want positive two, positive four. Can you see how that makes that look odd like that? And then this is the point negative four, zero, I want the point positive four, zero. Zero doesn't change its sign, but I change the sign of the other one. There you go. Does it look odd? Does it look like, remember odd functions are something that if you spun them around, they would end up being in the exact same spot. So if I could spin this, pivot it around the origin, that's what it would be. So it has four sections. The first one is red. And then this one is red. And then this one is blue and this one is blue. So maybe that's confusing to, to use those all those same colors. So I'm gonna switch this one to green and then this one to yellow just to make sure that 
it all looks different. So let's make those sections now. So the first one, red section goes from negative four, oop, bracket, negative four, that was just not working for me, sorry. Negative four to negative two, doesn't matter if you give it a bracket or a parenthesis. The green section can't have a bracket because it's a joined point, negative two to zero. Blue section goes from, I guess I made that a parenthesis so I can make this one a bracket, two to two, zero to two. I'm gonna make that one bracket, doesn't really matter. And the last one I'll just do in black, two to four. This one does have to be a bracket. Oh, this one can't be a bracket. Two to four, but the, the last one does have to be a bracket because nothing else attaches it. F of X is equal to, I think I can do that better. You don't have to do it perfectly, but I guess as the teacher, I should really try and do it perfectly. Okay. Perfect example of how you're, you're not finding that B. You can find the slope. It goes down to over one, but for the red one, all you need is any good point. So let's use the point negative four, zero X plus four plus zero. Y is equal to negative two X minus eight. If you want to put it there like that, negative two X minus eight. Same thing for the other red line. This is Y is equal to still has a downward slope of negative two. But now its point is positive four zero, or you could use the point two four. It has that point two, minus two plus four. It doesn't matter. And you can leave it like that, but I'm going to do it out just so that you can see the symmetry here. It's negative two X plus eight. So this one would have gone up to eight and this would have gone down to negative eight. So I, I actually did it out because I wanted you to see. All right, so every once in a while I have a really smart kid that combines the green and the blue section and they're like, oh, it's a cubic function. It's actually not cubic. It is true that Y is equal to X cubed does have this general shape, but after one, one, the next point it hits is two eight and ours only hits two four so it's not cubic okay it actually is one one two uh two four so oh i didn't draw it perfectly did i it goes right through one one so um there a little little nicer curve there uh so it is a square root function not um, not cubic. So you are going to have to do them separately. The green one is going to be a downward parabola and the blue one is going to be an upward parabola. Okay. So if you thought you were being super clever, I'm very proud of you. I love that you looked at it and thought it was cubic, but it's just two parabolas that are put together and they do look cubic. Okay. Remember, these can be reversed, those can be reversed. I'm not gonna write every possible answer every way. Last one, you're almost there. So we need to make an even function. An even function means you can fold it like a book. So I'm gonna cross the axis. If I'm at negative two, four, I'm now at positive two, four. Um, this goes through one, one. I missed that last time, so I'm gonna be a little more careful. And then the line goes down to four zero. So that middle section actually does make a, a complete parabola. I can write that as a single unit. Unlike this one, where when we put it together, it looked cubic. This one is not, but this, this is a nice parabola. 
So that middle section, do we need one more highlight just to end the class? Okay, that one's gonna be like that. And then we'll make this one red, this one green. Okay, final time, f of x is equal to, there's gonna be three of them. My red section goes from closed, negative four, to two, negative two, I'll make it open, which means this one's gonna to have to be closed from two, negative two to two. I'll make this one closed also. And then the green section, now this is gonna to have to be open to pass the vertical line test, two to four, closed. And what are my three graphs? I'm gonna do the middle one first. It's so nice and easy, it's just x squared. To do the last two, remember, as long as you know one point, negative four, zero, and on this one, I know four, zero, you can totally just use those points. So the slope is up two over one. So I have a slope of two and it goes through the point. I would take that. Is it tidy? No. 2x plus 8 is better, but you're welcome to do that. And I'm going to leave this one this way so you know you are allowed to do that. This one has a slope of negative 2, and it goes through the point 4, 0. Or you can write it as negative 2x plus 8, which might help you say, oh, yeah, if it kept going, it would cross at 8. And if this one kept going, it would cross at 8. So there's so much flexibility here. Please make sure that you do your homework on graph paper. You can see how exact these are. I want you to do a good job. Your homework is worth 10 points. So do a nice job, everybody. And have a great rest of the day.